Okay, welcome back to our series of videos on uh, Homer and all the neat things it can do. Um, this is the same window we left uh, last time when we were exploring the results. Um, and this is still uh, essentially the file, the, the, the problem specified by the Getting Started Guide. Um, these are the full range of results we got from that. But it turns out we can ask other questions. We can we can look at some more interesting things. So, um, and, and one of the things we look at is, well, what if the wind resource isn't as good as we thought? Or maybe it's better. Or what if um, the price of diesel fuel changes over time? Um, what, what does that mean to our design? Uh, and so what we do, from an, as, an, as an engineer, if you have these parts of our design that have uncertainty, then one of the things you want to do is a sensitivity analysis. And, and of course, that's just what it sounds like. We want to find out how sensitive our results are to variations in these these uncertain parameters. Um, Homer's got that built in, and, and we, we actually kind of stumbled across that, um, but we, we glossed over it. So to show that out, let's look at the, the, um, the resources, okay? So under wind resources, we have this, and in, and in many of these windows, they have the scaled annual average. And, um, and when we loaded this file in, it calculated what the average wind speed was. It was four and a half meters per second, and it put it in that box. Now, if I wanted to have roughly the same kind of shape of wind, but I said, you know, the average is really five meters per second, I could just change that value and redo, redo my calculation. Um, but, you know, you would do that only if you had some idea that, indeed, you had um, the same shape of the wind over the course of the year, um, but, but a little more intensity. Uh, what would be better to do is say, well, how, how sensitive is our results to a change in that? And so whenever you see these little, this button with these two braces and the ellipsis between them, this is an invitation for you to come in and say, well, let's put a range of values in. Um, and so you click, click, click on that. There's this little table here. And um, it, it, it automatically has the value you had in there. And you could put in values on either side of it, less or more. So let's put in, um, only put one value less than that, because once you get lower than about four meters per second, you're probably not going to be putting a full wind turbine anyway. Let's put five, six, seven, eight. And we'll jump, well, 10, 12, okay. So, big range. So, you know, what if what if the wind's a lot more than what we had before? And we'll hit OK there. So, show I put in eight different values there. And then instead of these ellipses, I'll click OK. Say diesel. And, of course, I'm looking at it and say, you've got to be kidding. For 40 cents a, a liter? I don't think so. So, we'll put in 0.6, 0.8. 9, 1, and 1.2. So, again, mostly higher, well, all higher values. Um, and again, now, here are my little, my little curly braces. Now, instead of just an ellipsis, it says oh, I've got six different values to look at. And <clears throat> we'll let go with that. We're going to hit Calculate again. And what you'll see is that um, it's got a lot more cases to run, not surprisingly. Right? It's gonna. It's it's what it's doing is that every combination of that wind average wind speed and uh, price of uh, of um, diesel fuel, it's rerunning the optimization. And so you can watch the progress over here. It's it says it thinks it's only going to do about another thirty seconds. You can see the bar progressing across the top of the screen. Um, watch the numbers kicking by. It's over halfway through now, um, and so I'm just going to kind of vamp until it's done here. You see the results changing. This is, um, I think, one of the most powerful aspects of homework because it really helps you explore the trade-offs of how this whole thing works together. And, and it's also very graphical and very easy to see. So um, it's all done. It took 52 seconds to do all that, a little less than a minute. Um, and uh, let me, before we explore those results, let me just look at these little alerts down at the bottom of the screen. Um, it says here, Trojan L16P search space may be insufficient, and Converter search space may be in the in, in, insufficient. So these little yellow triangles with an exclamation point are not errors, but they are concerns, I guess, that Homer has, or, or warnings uh, would be the better way to put it. And um, what they're saying, search space means how many different kind of um, values you put in. So um, the search space, if you remember from the Getting Started Guide, is this little grid up here on the main toolbar, this describes the search space. And so here's the L16P, the battery search space. And um, 
what they're saying is um, it Homer thinks that it might, you might do better with a few more batteries, which we discovered, right? We saw excess energy. Um, I'm okay with that. We know, we know what the problem is there. They're also saying that you might want different values of converters, probably bigger converters would help here too. Again, not a big concern. <clears throat> so, um, you know, it defaults to this optimization results tab, which we've already explored. Let's look at the sensitivity results over here. And, um, and you have these tabular data uh, shown up. I want to go to the graphic one. So and it's these little radio buttons on the right hand side here. Go to graphic. And we have um, a color image. And we have, um, we want to show the graph type, optimal system type, um, wind speed on the x-axis, diesel price on the y. So here's our, here's the range of diesel prices we look at, right? 40 cents to $1.20. And wind speed, here's our range of wind speed, 4 to 12. Now what was, if you remember, where were we when we started? We started at an average wind speed of 4.5, which is this line here, and a diesel price of, I don't know, was it 0.8? Maybe I put in 0.9. But anyway, you're seeing that uh, the two different colors are, are in this legend here. What they're saying is if it's black, what you really want is a generator. And if it's blue, what you really want is a wind turbine and a generator together. That, that's the, the optimum set are those two things together. Um, and this line separates that. So um, it doesn't, you know, as soon as you get up above a 5 meter per second wind speed, then the turbine's in the money. Right? Um, and lower wind speed, it's only in the money at higher fuel prices. Very intuitive. It makes sense. Um, you can... Uh, do a lot of things with this graph. You can superimpose any one of these other um, features in here, but what I like to do is the cost of energy, uh, which is, it's up here somewhere. Why can't I see it? Oh, levelized cost of energy. It's what the point you're sitting at right now. Press that, and so with each one of these things is the cost of energy in dollars per kilowatt hour, and, uh, and you're seeing that the optimal one for say, 5 meter per second wind speed and $1 per liter um, gas gives you a levelized cost of energy of 89 cents. Um, not surprisingly, for really high wind speeds, the price of energy is getting lower because you don't have the fuel costs. Um, for low wind speeds, you get some of the higher ones, right? You get uh, 70 cents, and as you go in higher up the axis here, higher diesel fuels, it's cost going up. So lowest cost in this corner, um, high, it looks like the highest cost is in that corner. Not surprising. Um, the other graph that I think is work, worth pointing out is the spider graph. And um, what you really want to do is look at the spider graph for the levelized cost of energy. And this is, I think, the, one of the real key results of the sensitivity analysis, because this shows cost of energy on the vertical axis, and then, and then we're looking at relative to the uh, our base value, or our best estimate. So what we're saying is that um, for the diesel price, uh, this was, um, this is our, our, uh, our, our beginning value for diesel, and this is 50% higher, 100% higher, or 50% higher. And what you're seeing is this slope tells us the slope of this line, tells us how sensitive the cost of energy is to the price of diesel. Similarly, the blue line is the wind speed, saying that for higher wind speeds, level, lower levelized cost of energy. And again, the slope is a, um, an indication of how sensitive they are. Just kind of eyeballing it, first of all, the wind isn't linear. We knew that, right, because winds, the, the power that comes out of the wind is a cube of the wind speed, so I'm glad to see that it's not linear. Um, diesel price is fairly a fairly linear graph. It's a little more complicated than that, but you'd expect it to be fairly linear. And just eyeballing that, these slopes are pretty similar, which tells me that um, if I want to refine my analysis, I'm going to focus on something else. You know, the question I ask is, boy, do I really want to nail down the diesel price and make sure I understand that, or do I want to really nail down my wind resource um, and understand that? And what we're finding is, um, well, you need them both. They're, they're both about equally sensitive. Um, and, that's, and that's fine.
So, um, yeah, I think that's about it. I think those are the most important things. So, um, well, it's been 10 minutes. Let me just take a few more minutes to talk about some of the other things. So we, we explored a, quite a bit of the, um, optim, of the, uh, of Homer and its capabilities. You'll see that as we go along, we're going to be able to specify solar panels and other maybe more exotic renewable energy systems. Um, we'll look at wind resources. We'll look at, um, we, we've seen the fuel. We didn't look at any of these four buttons here. So let's take a quick look at them in the time we've got left. So here's the economics. This is, I keep referring to this, how long, uh, what's the period of analysis for the economic analysis, and that's where it sets. So you'll see here the second line, project lifetime in years, 25 years. So by default, it does a 25-year analysis. Probably a good, pretty good, um, pretty good timeline for a lot of reasons, um, not the least of which is that that's the expected life of solar panels. Um, and in and, and wind turbines, you know, you're not going to expect them to go much longer than uh, somewhere in the 20 to 30 year range. The uh, interest rate, the cost of capital, or whatever you want to call it, um, is set here. 6% is, is probably a good one. This, you might want to think of this as that if you were going to get a loan to install this, you know, what would it be? Right? That's, the, that's probably the best way to look at it. Um, certainly home mortgages are a lot cheaper these days. They're in the 3 to 5% range, depending on your credit or, or what kind of collateral. But I guess you could do this as a second mortgage, but those, even those are getting up to about 6%. Or if you're just doing this as a, as a you know, a loan to finance with this, you know, renewable energy, it might be 6, 7, or 8%. Um, so that's the, that's the most important thing here. This kind of lets you kind of deal with, the, you know, let you play with the economic analysis. And notice here, the braces, sensitivity analysis again. So you can look at how the system, how sensitive your optimization is to the annual interest rate, for example. With the economics um, system and control, this is probably where we'll see things about um, the electricity going back and forth, right? Charge, cycle charging. So probably um, this dispatch strategy is why we've got a rectifier that's sometimes using the diesel generator to charge the um, um, the battery. In fact, they, they pretty much talk about here the system controls to find out how Homer models the operation of the battery bank and the generators. Dispatch strategy determines how the system charges the battery bank. So, um, so what you're trying to do is you're trying to kind of maintain a state of charge of about 80%. Um, and as I hover the mouse, I don't know if you can read it, I don't know what the resolution of the screen is, but we just got a little information pop up about that. Let's see if I can get it back up. The generator will not stop charging the battery bank until it reaches that specified rate. So that's why we're, we're, um, we're actually using a generator to charge the battery, even though we don't particularly may not need the power at that time. Um, generator control, multiple turbine simulation step size. So Basically, um, this is a time-based simulation. It's going to march through the year, um, and it says by default it goes to 60 minutes, uh, one hour. Um, you can change that. You know, it's unlikely that we need to change that, but you can go. My guess is you might want to try a quarter hour or two hours and see if your results change. Particularly, that's a good thing to turn to if your results are really screwy. You look at this and say, boy, something's really wrong here. It could be a numerical problem in the simulation, and then it shows up there. Um, emissions. So this actually talks about if you if your system is operating under, um, you know, some kind of a regulatory environment where you have to pay for emissions. Uh, that's not that's not at all unusual. Um, there already is a regulatory environment where power companies have to pay for sulfur dioxide emissions. We have, we actually have a long-standing cap-and-trade system in this country, and, and with Canada for that matter, to, to limit sulfur dioxide output from power plants. Um, we've already been doing this for years. Um, uh, sometimes, you know, for some of these more, more uh, traditional pollutants like um, the carbon, hydrocarbons or carbon monoxide, um, that these might be penalties that, that you have to pay. Uh, so, so that's a place to put in there. We're not going to get into that. That's getting a, a little more sophisticated than we want. And the last thing I wanted to talk about, um, and then we'll wrap up this video, is constraints. 
So this talks about what uh, Homer finds is an acceptable solution. By default, it's going to look at um, only a solution that meets the load you put in. It, it basically, it says, this is the load. I'm going to put together generators, batteries, turbines, whatever you want, to make sure I meet that load. Um, and so there's um, so maximum annual capacity shortage is in here. This this lets you say um, at one at any given hour, um, if that's at zero, you if you needed 2.5 kilowatts, you're going to get 2.5 kilowatts. If you put that number uh, something like other than zero, 5% or 10%, it's going to say, okay, there's going to be certain periods of the year, certain hours of the year, where you might want 5 kilowatts, and um, I can only get you 4.5 kilowatts. And, 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 and if you put that right, then that's a half out of 5, 10% shortfall. Um, so if that was 10%, Homer would say, good enough, we're close enough, and, and, and it gives us a chance to explore what I was referring to earlier. Um, you know, kind of not just how do we make electricity some other way, but how do we change the way we use electricity? And this this will give us a way to explore that. And I'm really looking forward to that. You can also set a minimum renewable fraction. So this basically says, uh, for example, if you're in a state that requires a certain re renewable portfolio or a renewable percentage, um, you put it in there, and it says, okay, I'm only going to find acceptable solutions that meet that renewable portfolio standard. So it adds that constraint to the economic constraints you already use. Um, you can say, wow, you know, I'd really like a reserve. You know, I don't want to just meet my load. I want to be able to handle fluctuations because how well do you know your load? You don't know what's going to be going on. So um, by default, it's going to keep about a 10% reserve. So, so, you know, so that if when you're actually using the system, should you build it, and your load doesn't exactly follow what you would put in for your load in the analysis, it could vary as much as 10%, and you should still be okay. Um, and so those are the main things I wanted to point, about, point out there. So those are the constraints. And these are the things we'll look into. So um, I think that's a pretty good overview of Homer and what it does. Um, uh, what I'm going to be working on now is um, I took the AMI data that we use for homework for, and I manipulated it. I spent about three hours wrestling with it this afternoon, but turned it into files that homework can pull in. And, well, and, and, and to do that, I had to turn those four and a half months full of holes into 8,760 hours, full 12 months, and do it in a way that the hours lined up. Because remember, the when those those loads happen will matter if you're using a solar plant or even you know trying to calculate that with wind. So um, so it took me a while. Um, so but I think we have it. We've got we've got four different loads, and we'll we'll construct a series of homework assignments around those files. Um, you know what do you do if you got a small wind turbine? What do you do if you have diesel? You know what do you do when you hook it up to the grid, and so on. So there's all sorts of things we can do there. So um, but I'll kind of leave it at that right now. So. Um, that's these are the this is the, the last of the videos that we'll post for Thursday. Um, I encourage you to, to to do what I did. Notice pull up Homer, run these simulations, understand this because it'll be so much easier when we start doing the assignments. Um, so that's it. Thanks.